Hello and welcome to the edited version of the Fire Emblem Three Houses Combat Arts tier list. The topic for this list was voted for by the people who have backed the channel over on Patreon, a link to which is in the description where for £1 a month you can get a bunch of benefits, or for £3 a month you can get all of those plus the opportunity to vote on next month's tier list. A huge thanks to those who have supported, it is greatly appreciated. This tier list was originally streamed, so if you have already watched that version, this is just a trimmed down version of the same list with some additional overlays to provide detail on each of the combat arts as we discuss them. Also, before we begin, a quick thanks to Lux for uploading this tier list to Tier Maker for me after I made it, since I neither have nor want a Twitter account. With that out of the way, let's get into the criteria for the list. It's considering maddening, it's considering the new game difficulty with no online play. No excessive grinding, that's particularly relevant for this one, no sitting in forests with broken weapons to, to max out stats or things like that, that won't be being considered here, so you can't get a, an A rank in something for chapter 3 or something like that, that's, that's not what we're factoring in. What else? No exploits, no Groundhog Day or anything like that. That about sums up the, the more general rules. Uh, also no Pagan Altar, I don't know if it particularly plays an impact here, but I, I just tend to count it out anyway. No Pagan Altar is just a standard rule I play by, and I wouldn't know how to judge it with the Pagan Altar because I don't use it. Um, we're judging the combat arts based on pretty much everything around them. That includes unlock times, how good they actually are, obviously, who gets access to them, things like that. It's probably going to be quite a scuffed tier list because combat arts vary a lot from unit to unit, and a lot of how good a combat art is depends on the unit using it. So it could be a little bit a little bit all over the place in some areas, but hopefully we can we can model through and we can get somewhere. So every combat art in the game is on this, apart from the ones granted by relic weapon crests, or crests, well, relic weapons. The raging storms and your atrocities and your apocalyptic flames, those sorts of things. Those are being factored in with crests rather than rather than combat arts. So those aren't on this list today because I think it would just pretty much be a duplicate of what the crest tier list will be with obviously extra crests added. Finally, whether you're watching live or you're watching the VOD in the future, debate is fine. You can disagree as much as you want. Just keep it civil. We can keep the abuse and name calling to a minimum. That would be outstanding. Thank you. Armored Strike. So it's an axe combat art. It adds three might and ten crit. It has one range, a cost of four durability, and it is the defense scaling combat art. Adds defense times 0.3 to might and cannot make follow-up attacks. It is available at A axes for Anna, Balthus, Cyril, Dadu, and Ferdinand. I'm not gonna lie, A axes for that is pretty mediocre. A couple of those units can be ruled out straight away from usefulness. Anna and Cyril just don't really have defense stats that are even worth consideration. Uh, I guess you could like baseline it with like Fortress Knight or something, but that's pretty eh? A Combat arts are normally a lot more impactful than this. And yeah, like was just said, most of these units don't really want to be in the high defense classes. Ferdinand's much preferred movement-based things. You could potentially do it with Balthus and the do, I suppose, but even then you're in a it's not really where you want them to be, I don't think. Maybe you could go like Great Knight or something, but the do has a riding bane, so probably not. If Raph or Hilda had this, it would be a lot better. That's probably true. I'm questioning between C and D right now. I think if this came earlier, it it could potentially be higher. Not giving hit is actually pretty bad for an Axe Combat Art too. That being said, on someone in Fortress Knight, you would be hitting pretty hard, right? And it's not like Axes have... It's not like Axes are actually hacking massively hard hitting Combat Arts on ge in general. Anyway, they have Diamond Axe, but that's even less accurate. You could potentially make a case that as far as Axe Combat Art goes, even in the cases where you aren't stacking defense, you might actually get some value from this, maybe? I think we can put it C tier for that reason. They do have Helm Splitter. But even then, I think this will end up outscaling Helm Splitter before too long. You only need an extra five damage to outscale, four damage to max, but then Helm Splitter gives hit. Yeah, I think it's probably like a solid C tier. Yeah, it's also C rank versus A rank. Yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. Armor Strike is pretty bad. It might move down. We'll have to sort of, the first one's always weird. I say this every time. We'll have to see how the tier list shapes up before we can properly judge it. Astra is fairly appalling. Astra gives no might. It loses 10 hit and it has a cost of nine durability. It strikes five times consecutively. Each strike deals 30% of the damage of a normal strike would. It is possible for any and all of these strikes to be a critical hit or to miss. It's only available to Swordmasters. The biggest issue, the by far biggest issue that Astra has is it is a class locked combat art from an advanced class which gives it the unfortunate scenario of almost by necessity having to be compared to Hunter's Volley and Fierce Iron Fist. 
which are significantly better. It's just so sketchy. Minus 10 hit on swords is actually not too terrible, because swords are pretty accurate by and large. You can actually throw this at things, especially with the classes and 8 crit plus 10, and like actually do reasonable damage it's just so convoluted in the way that it works for no reason and then yet why does it cost nine durability it's so costly you also have to master swords master and stay in sword master which isn't great yeah even in a void it's not good in actual practice being where it is at sword mastering sword master and then staying in the class i agree with gns that it doesn't deserve the hate that it gets it's still pretty bad. It's still going down in D tier, I'm afraid. It comes way too late in the game. It's not as good as similar options available at the time. And even, like, I think Rui said it best there. Even in a void, you wouldn't use it. It's still bad. And the cost of 9 jar ability just basically nullifies using it with something like the Sword of Zoltan, for example, where you could still do decent damage. That's actually a good point as well. It's only useful for Swordmasters that can't double, which is a relatively... I think it's on a class on the quicker end, if I remember correctly. Typically, your Swordmasters will be quite fast. On to the next one, then. Bane of Monsters. It is a 6 might 10 crit sword combat art that costs 4 durability and give deals bonus damage to monster units. Now... For those of you who may be unaware, bonus damage for combat arts works differently to bonus damage on weapons. From combat arts, it is doubled. On weapons, it is tripled. So anything where it's bonus damage here is double damage, not triple. So this deals essentially double damage to monster units. It gives a boost of six might, which for swords is actually quite relevant anyway. A boost of 10 crit is actually kind of nice. And it comes to Balthus, Byleth, Catherine, Claude, and Petra at C+. I think the real thing here is that the units that get this, possibly excluding Balthus, but you could even go Vantage on Balthus, they all actually don't mind raising swords. Like, okay, they probably aren't raising them to C+, but you're probably nudging them up from, like, C or D+, which isn't actually awful. I actually think this is fairly okay. It's a nice might modifier. It's relatively early game. You can get it for, like, Chapter 4, but, like, you probably aren't. You have other things to raise. Um, you're probably looking more, like, probably, like, realistically when you would actually get this. It's probably around Chapter 5 or 6. I think it's, like, a solid B tier. Again, not giving hit is a little cost... Well, not costly, but, like, I would like it to give some hit. Especially because you might be getting this at the stage before you Master Archer. Extra hit at that point in time is just more valuable than hit afterwards because your hit is just lower. You also are getting it before necessarily your best gambits come in, or best battalions, I mean, that boost hit. I think it's a solid B tier combat art. It's got its place, it's not build defining, and it's not, I wouldn't call it great, but it's, it's good. You appreciate Bane of Monsters, it's okay. And hitting a monster with it, it's pretty solid. But I left can get it really quickly as well, actually. That is a good point, because you can, of the tutoring differences, and just the good base. Yeah, I think it's pretty solid in B tier. I don't think there's too much further to go with this. Oh, I'd think of it as a cheap relic art. Never any reason to not want it. Exactly, right? It's okay. Bane of Monsters is okay. Anyone who's running Wrath Strike, you just swap it out. It's it's pretty good. So, Bombard. Bombard is a brawling combat art, and the important thing to note here is it keeps the brawling brave effect. It strikes twice consecutively. Gives a boost of 3 might. It gives a boost of 10 crit. Costs 3 durability and has 1 range. And by the way, this comes to Caspar at C+, and Catherine at A. Brawling is a little odd to judge here, because it's actually not... Not a bad combat art on Catherine, apart from the fact that she doesn't actually get any of the good brawling classes. She can't really utilize it that much. It is very good on Caspar. I think like the main consideration is definitely Caspar here. The plus 10 crit is appreciated as well with the striking twice. It's more crit is good when you're when you're striking more than once. Obviously goes without saying that crit chance applied to more hits is good. Plus three might as well on a double hit in combat art is not bad. Catherine can put in work with Bombard. That's the thing, right? Like, if you give Catherine Bombard, she can still punch things to death with it. But, like, the issue is getting Catherine to A brawling is a bit of a chore. If this came at C plus brawling on Catherine, I think it's possibly a bit higher than it is. I think it's, as B tier shout is reasonably solid. I don't think it's A tier. Not just Fierce Iron Fist, but I question how it compares to Nimble Combo as well, which is also very, very good. The crit from Bombard is better, but the the uh, might on Nimble Combo is slightly better. And I think I slightly prefer the availability too, but we'll get to Nimble Combo when we get to it. But I think for now, it's probably a solid B tier. I like it slightly more than Bane of Monsters because I think like Bane of Monsters is a nice filler ability on a lot of units. Bombard basically defines Caspar. I think for now, this is high B. It's basically very defining for Caspar. It isn't really available to anyone else apart from Catherine. It doesn't get great use out of it, but it's, it's good for Caspar. And it, it's a, it is quite build defining for him until he at least gets to Grappler. And then when you go back to Warmaster, it can once again reappear and be very good. It's a, it's a solid combat art. You can't complain too much 
much about Bombard. I like saying Bombard, it's a fun word to say. So, Break Shot deals an extra 4 damage, is plus 5 hit, 2 to 3 range, 3 durability, and deals bonus damage to flying units. If the attack hits, it inflicts a minus 5 defense debuff on the target after combat. It's available to Anna, Ignatz, and Leonie at C plus bows. Being available at C plus bows to units that want to raise bows anyway is very good. First of all, its availability, for what it is, is relatively solid. You can't really complain. It's 2 to 3 range. You're never going to complain about that. The defense debuff is nice. It varies in usefulness as the game's fate sort of changes, but it definitely has its moments where it's good. Tankier enemies are always, like, nice to hit with it. It's basically plus 9 damage if you don't one round. That is true. It's a solid ability. I definitely think it's B tier at least. Until it's good on Leonie until you get PBV, that's probably true. That is the point. That is the thing, right? Like, it does drop off a cliff as the game progresses, but it's, it's good. I don't think it's better than Bombard is, is where I would fall. I think it's here. Again, I think it's kind of similar to Bane of Monsters in a way. Like, it's a good filler ability on those units, but it's not as, it's not as defining as uh, Bombard is for Caspar. Which, and I think Bombard for its point in time as well, like, if you're asking me which C-plus combat art do I want on a, a, a unit, Bombard or Breakshot, I'm probably choosing Bombard. But Breakshot is really nicely available for the units that do want it, it has that going for it, and it's it's solid, it's a defense debuff, just varies a lot in usefulness. Even not factoring in the defense debuff though, a plus 4 might combat art on bows with 2 to 3 range, with the only cost 3 durability, it's solid. It's perfectly fine, right? You can't go wrong with that even without the defense debuff. It's good. Curved Shot is A tier. It's very comfortably A tier. It's gonna be high A tier as A tier pads out. Curved Shot is great. It's available at D-Rank Bows for everybody. It provides 2 to 3 range, 30 hit, and 1 point of damage. It's so readily available. Only costs 3 durability, which might sound negligible, but in the early game, it's really relevant. Curved Shot is very important in the early game, absolutely. How pretty much everyone uses it for most of the game. I could actually see it in S tier. We will see how the tiers pad out. We will see what A tier and S tier looks like, and towards the end, we can, we can re-evaluate I think for now I'm going to put it in A tier. I feel like it's probably easy to move up rather than it is to, to move down. It could absolutely move up later down the line. We'll see what the tiers look like. A lot of people have mentioned like Curve Shot early to mid game already. So, and you're absolutely right. The thing is Curve Shot is a great filler ability even in the late game. Right, now let's take Sylvain as an example. You're running around with Swift Strikes, right? That's your primary attack. Your other two slots are basically free to use whatever you want with. One of those slots is almost always getting filled with Curve Shot because extra range is good. 30 hit is good. Like, bonus damage to flying units still carrying over is good. Like, there's very little to complain about here. It's it's a really good combat art. And it's so readily available as well. Like, so many units get it for, for chapter 2 with so little effort. And whether or not it ends up in S tier, I mean, I think it's fairly predictable S tier will be a lot of the sort of big carry combat arts that come from around, like, the mid game. We'll see whether or not it can measure up. We'll see ma mainly what ends up in A tier with it as to where it falls. So, next up, Deadeye. Deadeye provides plus six range, or plus six might, sorry, plus six range would be insane, although it does give three to five range. Cost five durability, did bonus damage to flying units. It comes to Ash and Bernadetta at C plus bows, and from Yuri's mastering his budding talent. Deadeye is really good. It's a really nice damage spike of plus six on bows, which is great. It's, it's got three to five range. The only thing that lets it down is the lack of a hit modifier, but it's not the end of the world. You can still use it from two range. Oh, sorry, from 3 range for plus 6 hit. Like, it's really good. It's kind of hard to fault too much. Um, the fact that it can't be used from 2 range is a little bit of a drawback, to be fair. But outside of that, you're not really complaining too much about this. I think this is A tier. If it lands heads, you kill the thing. That's the thing, like, you... Okay, okay you're attacking from 30 range, you lose 30 hit. But we stack hit so heavily anyway. Especially, like, the further the game goes on, this almost gets a little bit better. Because you stack so much hit anyway onto units that, like, you can afford to be 3 tiles away and still hit. You shouldn't be in the same tier as Curve Shot. I think, like, Deadeye is really good. I'm not gonna lie. Like, it comes online so early as well. It's C plus for units that actually go into bows early. Say, Ash, for an example, is pretty solid. Yuri gets it for mastering his budding talent in bows, which, again, you're probably gonna do pretty quick. But every unit that uses it goes to bows. True, but, like, I still think it's good for that period where, like, you're mastering Hunter's Volley, for example, or the period between Chapter 4 and, like, Chapter 8, where you're using bows but you don't have Sniper. I still think it holds a lot of relevance at that point in time. We could potentially move Curve Shot up. I could absolutely see that happening. But I think Deadeye holds a lot of relevance throughout the game. Uh, 3 to 5 range is just really good. If Deadeye is A, then Curve Shot has to be S. I mean, we might add extra tiers at some point, like plus tiers or something, but... I don't know, we might move 
Dead Eye down to B for now. Because my issue is, like, you say if Dead Eye is A, Curve Shot has to be S. Like, if Curve Shot is S, Hunter's Volley has to be, like, above S. <laughs> like, um, but yeah, I think Dead Eye is, like, really solid, to be honest. I, I could see it, like, it probably not being the same tier as Curve Shot. That's probably fair, but I think it's really definitely got its use cases. Like, I don't agree that it doesn't really help. I mean, I think being able to even just, like, aggro an enemy from five tiles away is really useful in a lot of scenarios. Like, especially some of the more, like, circular maps, like Chapter 6 or Chapter um, 8, for example. It, it has a lot of use just being able to aggro enemies over walls and things like that from five tiles away. Some good niche uses is probably a, a good way to put it. I don't think it's as inaccurate as people seem to think it is, but maybe I'm wrong about that. Diamond Axe comes at C plus on Balthus, A on Hilda, Petra, and Seteth, and is from Claude's budding talent, so he gets it very early on. It gives 14 might, you lose 20 hit, and it costs 7 durability. It's a one range attack. It's very high damage output at a very big risk. You lose 20 hit from using it. Claude gets it incredibly early. The problem is that axes early are not that accurate in the first place, and losing 20 hit from them is unfortunate. Diamond X is kind of good if it lands, but then there is my luck who never seems to hit it. Thank you, Hilda. Yeah, that is the big issue, hitting the attack. But like, if you're in a pinch and you need a big hit, it's kind of good to just slap things with. Hilda's a bit of a weird one, because like, by the time she's getting this, she probably just has better ways to just hit things. It's just such a big risk for what it is. I think it's definitely got use cases, for sure. I think it's a nice ability to have. The other issue is, like, even, like, say, Claude. You can probably get Tempest Lance on Claude for Chapter 3. And it's only minus 6 damage for a 30 extra hit. Plus the fact that Lances are more accurate than Axes. And it doesn't cost 7 durability. I think... Diamond Axe is probably above Armored Strike in C tier. I just think that clicking this isn't something you do often enough for it to be higher than B tier. When you click it, it can be really, really beneficial. Like, having the option to click it is really nice. You just don't actually want to. <laughs> yeah, Costabile basically said it right. Having the option to do it in a pinch is good, even if you don't want to be in that situation. Get Monster Blast or Helm Split. I said, yeah, well, I'm just saying, like, for a Chapter 3 combat art, your, your plus 8 damage from Tempest Lance is probably better. I'm not saying you actively want to get Tempest Lance on Claude, I'm just like making the comparison to another combat art he could have at that time. Diamond Axe should have a Divine Pulse. That's a good point. Like, if you're okay with rigging, uh, Diamond Axe gets the notable about better. But yeah, like, it's, it hits hard, doesn't do much else. Draining Blow gives 5 might, 20 hit, costs 3 durability at 1 range, and restores half the damage dealt back to their user's HP. It can't make follow-up attacks. It comes at C plus Brawling to Balthus and Byleth, and A Brawling to Raphael. To get the obvious one out of the way, Raphael, A Brawling, this is awful. Way, way, way too late in the game for this to ever be useful. I don't really see the need for a healing gauntlet combat art, especially at, like, by chapter 4, like, your units who want physic have got physic with no real issues. You'll have a lot of units with heal. Health isn't really an issue at that point in time. You can pretty effectively nullify it. And it's only plus 5 might for one hit. Plus 20 hit is definitely somewhat valuable. Um, if you just need, like, a more accurate hit to finish something off, I suppose, but I don't think the heal's really relevant, especially, like, like was mentioned, uh, healing focus does come, but, like, if you could run this instead of healing focus, it's kind of okay. I don't think it's actively bad for Balthus, because it's not like it's going off when you don't want it to, right? But I understand what you mean, you, a lot of the time you probably don't wanna, don't wanna click it on, on Balthus. I think it, like, your plus 20 hit gives it a niche use case, like, if you just want, and it comes early enough to where you might just throw it on a unit as, like, a filler combat art. You can click it, you can get plus 20 hit on an already pretty accurate gauntlet hit, just to ensure you finish off an enemy, like, I see that, it could be okay. I think it's probably bottom of C tier for now. There's worse, for sure, I'd rather have it than Astra. Yeah, I think it's... It's around for long enough as well. You'll probably get like one or two clicks out of it, at least on Balthus and Byleth. Raphael's completely irrelevant. Drawback you get from mastering the Monk class. It basically pulls a unit back a tile and moves the unit who uses it back a tile too. An attribute of this that needs to be mentioned is that typically your mages aren't stacking that many combat arts, which means that Drawback actually sticks around for a lot longer than the other movement combat art. And Rui hit the nail on the head. It helps them move forward with their full move. And also moves your team forward too. The usability you get out of this is really high. Like the actual amount of time you'll use this and the amount of times you'll click this is really high. It also obviously has the saving aspects of it. Like you can save your units, you can pull them out of range. It has really cool repositional effects. It's essentially a plus two movement ability. You're moving two units, one tile. It's very, very reasonable. If it wasn't for the caveat that mages always are running this, I might put it B tier. But with that in, in mind, I think it moves up to A. I think this is a solid A tier combat art. I don't think it's ever, like, breaking anything, but I think it's, like, very, very consistently very useful. 
you end up never using it. I find myself clicking it quite a lot. It's just quite useful in a lot of scenarios. Um, but yeah, drawback is very, very good for a long period of time throughout the game. It's very solid. Uh, Enclosure. Enclosure is interesting. It has some caveats to it, but by and large, it's a very, very good combat art. It comes with 4 might, 15 hit, 2 range, and 3 durability. It inflicts the frozen status on the target it hits, and it deals bonus damage to flying units. It is available at A bows to Bernadetta and Claude. It's a very solid ability on the units that get it. The biggest issues... A is 2 range, not 2 to 3, which kind of sucks. Secondly, I question how quickly Bernie and Claude are raising bows. Not that it's bad to raise bows on Bernie and Claude, but they typically prioritize other things first. So you aren't necessarily getting this as early as you possibly could. Meaning by the stage of the game, you probably have a lot of kill options when you actually get it. That being said, it locks a unit in place. That's incredibly valuable, right? Especially when you're being rushed by bosses. The other thing that lets Enclosure down a little bit is that a lot of bosses have the, the ability where their movement can't be frozen. Like they can't be crowd controlled, essentially. That's pretty much the, the other big issue with it. I'm debating between high B and low A. I think it's probably low A. I think it's notably better than Deadeye. So yeah, I think moving Deadeye down to B was a correct call, by the way. I think Enclosure is probably low A. I think it's notably better than, than Deadeye. Another point that's like kind of relevant is it kind of just replaces Curved Shot in a way. As sort of like that filler ability on those two units. Like it's just it's just a, a freeze. Or you can run it alongside Curved Shot, obviously, if you've, if you've got spot free. But like, I think Bernadette running like Vengeance, Curved Shot, Enclosure would probably be pretty common. Yeah, I agree with GNS. Like, it's basically just a button to say, like, okay, I can't kill this this turn, but I also don't have to worry about it. It's 15 hit extra as well. Like, even if you just want an extra 15 hit, eh. If you aren't running curve shot for whatever reason, the extra 15 hit is nice. You can't go too wrong with it, really. The only issues are you get it a little bit later than you would necessarily want it, but it's it's good. You always run in closer if you have it. Probably true. Um, it's just it's very exclusive and comes kind of late is the only issue. Exhaustive Strike. Gives 3 might. Gives 10 hit. 1 range. Costs 1 durability. Adds remaining durability times 0.3 to might. So 30% uh, of the remaining durability to the might. Reduces the chosen weapon durability to 0 after the combat, turning it into a broken weapon. I think this is just bad. I genuinely don't see why you would want this. It comes at A axes on Alois and Kaspar and is Happy's budding talent. Rengor, why is Exhaustive C? <laughs> um, money's not an issue, but you can't repair your weapon in the map. Since they have 50 durability, uh, true, true. So that's 15 might to a 50 might weapon, to a 50 durability weapon. It's like Diamond Axe, but without the minus hit. It's like Diamond Axe, but without the minus hit, and it comes at, like, really late. Like, A axe is on Aloe and Caspar. So you guys plus 55, that's like plus 17 might. I could actually see it being clicked, like, occasionally. It's probably at least above Astra. Steel Axe plus is 60? Because it's not like money's a problem in free houses. That's an extra 18 might. I could see a plus 18 might combat art, like, generally just being clicked. I think the cost is high, mainly because it means you can't use that weapon anymore, and B, you're stuck with a broken weapon on the enemy phase unless you trade swap. If this was, like, an older Fire Emblem, where when your weapon broke, it just poofed out of existence, and you just had another weapon ready for, ready for the enemy phase, it might be slightly better, even. Plus 21 because 3 base might- yes, exactly. True. Yeah, I could see Exhaustive Strike potentially being clicked just because of the sheer damage it outputs. That's actually still pretty okay from Happy, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think it's fair there. It's definitely fair in CTA, fair enough. I can see that for sure. Fading Blow gives 6 might, 10 hit, and 30 avoid or crit. It's 1 range and the unit moves back a space after combat. It comes at D brawling. I'm gonna move Armored Strike below these. I think that's probably fair. Yeah, it's Fading Blow. I think it's pretty good. Whenever I've used it, I've got solid usability out of it. Being able to just re-allow other units to attack from that space is really nice, especially on things like monsters where you've broken a tile, and then you can then just hit that tile again while getting extra might on it. I think it's a solid B-tier combat art. I don't think it's better than Bombard. I like putting it above Break Shot and Bane of Monsters. It comes very early on most units. It's a move. It's a movement tool. I guess if you use it like from the right angle, you could use it to progress further in the level too. I'd probably go there. I'd probably go above Break Shot. I think Fading Blow holds much more viability as the game progresses, whereas debuffs just kind of don't. The accuracy boost of 10 is really nice. The plus 6 might boost is really nice. So I'd probably place it there. Break shot over fading? Uh, I don't agree. I don't think the damage debuff from break shot really holds its value enough as units start to get more and more just one-shotty as the game progresses. Uh, whereas movement from fading blow is always useful. Fading blow becomes a joke later? How so? It's plus 10 might. It's plus 6 damage and it moves you back. 
Armored be over exhaustive? I don't I don't necessarily think so. I, th I think I'd take exhaustive over armored, honestly. The might boost is just huge. Is six mites on gauntlets when you can just kill the enemy? I mean, it depends what you're using. If you're in grappler with fierce iron fist, sure. But like, extra movement is always just nice, right? Like, even just hitting an enemy with fading blow to move you closer to where you want to be is fairly solid. It is locked out of mounted units, that is true. I just don't think I'm even clicking break shot in the the later game. I mean, I suppose you can. Enemies do get pretty bulky, but like, you can use them if you're dismounted, Mudak. I could go either way on this, honestly. I don't necessarily think one is better than the other. I think it's quite situational. Um, I think I'd personally still take Fading Blow over Break Shot. Fading Blow provides an accuracy boost at D rank low, which is really appreciated in the, in the early game. Like, especially like, before you have hit plus 20 and stuff. Like, just to, to finish units off in the early game, it's really nice. Fierce Iron Fist grants one might, it has one range, it costs five durability, it strikes three times consecutively, it is grappler only, and it comes from mastering the grappler class, which is male exclusive. All that said and done, it's S tier, it's excellent. It basically gives any male unit kill potential for free. It's insanely good. It does also give plus 10 crit. Yeah, plus 10 crit on an ability that hits three times is really nice. It's incredible. It basically, yeah, it turns any male unit into a kill bot. Really, really good. There's very little discussion to be had around Fierce Iron Fist. It is elite. Very, very accessible. I don't think there's much more to say on Fierce Iron Fist, to be honest. It's a shame to buzz by one that's so impactful so quickly, but there's not much more to say. There's not much discussion to be had around it. It's strictly just very good. And I, I don't think much more needs to be said on it than that. It's, it's all around excellent. If only it wasn't locked to Grappler, that possibly is the only drawback, but Grappler, six move class with Forest Walking, it's it's not the worst class to be locked to. So, Finesse Blade. Might plus two, Avoid plus, Avoid and Crit Avoid plus ten, Cost four durability, adds dexterity time, or 30% of your dexterity to the Might, can't make follow-up attacks, comes innately to Catherine and at A Swords to Claude, Felix, Petra, and Jury. So this is Catherine's personal combat art. Yeah, I'm kind of in agreement. I don't think any of the others are ever really getting this. I mean, you might see it on Felix in the run we're doing currently, but outside of that, I don't think you're ever getting A swords on Claude, Felix, Petra, or Yuri. It is basically Catherine exclusive, and it's it's okay. Um, I'm not sure what, what Catherine's decks normally scales like, to be fair. I don't think it's impactful enough. Yuri might get it, but he'd rather still click Windsweeper. That's absolutely true, to be fair. I think it's a solid C rank spell. It's really awkward to judge because we're only really judging it for one unit, quote-unquote, and it's middling at best impact on her. Might be worse than Wrath Strike. I mean, Wrath Strike's better just because of how accessible it is, but even specifically on Catherine, yeah, maybe. Um, it's probably somewhere in C tier. I don't, I'm not too confident on this one. I'll probably put it above a Exhaustive Strike, below Draining Blow, just for accessibility. If that's wrong, I'll be completely honest. I don't care enough about Finesse Blade to, to figure out where exactly it is in C tier, but that sounds about right to me. Flickering Flower. I honestly don't think I've ever clicked this. I might, I might be telling a lie, but I don't think I've ever clicked Flickering Flower. It gives 10 Might. Very good. Gives 10 Hit. Very nice. It gives 10 Avoid. Okay, not bad. It's one range. Kind of sucks. Three durability. Okay, not too high durability. It inflicts the frozen status on the target once it, once it hits. So it freezes them like Enclosure. That's really good. It's locked to Emperor. Womp womp. Even if you were using em Emperor, I don't think you're mastering the class before you get this. Like, even if you did make Edelgard Emperor, which I think is hella sketchy, you're not mastering the class to get it. I, 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 I don't know when you're... You only have Emperor for six class... Or not even six chapters. You have it for what? Like three? Four? So you take a counter-attack and like and close. Exactly true. Um, unless the enemy's ranged, I guess. But then also just kill them. It, it's that stage of the game. Just kill the enemy. Just bonk them. The point of Flickering Flower is, to, is locking a monster to have to melee Edelgard on enemy phase. Right. I think they missed that point pretty hard. I think it's bottom of D tier. Let's move on. Focus Strike gives 30 hit. It has one range. It costs three durability. It cannot make follow-up attacks. It is innate to set F and comes at C plus axes on Ash and Ferdinand. 30 hit is very nice, but it doesn't give any bonus might at all, which is really rare. I can't say I've ever used Focus Strike too much. Plus 30 accuracy on axes is nice. I just question its usefulness. It comes at C plus axes on Ash and Ferdinand, which, okay, you probably will hit. It's an 8 on set F, but isn't this just a worse curve shot that you get significantly later with a lot less availability? Or even Smash, actually. That's a much better comparison point. I was going for the 30 accuracy, but yeah, as far as 
Axe Combat Arts go. Plus 20 with 3 might and 20 crit that's available to everyone is a lot better. This is D tier. I might click it over. There might be a time where 30 hit is like just what you need, right? Like you need 30 hit instead of 20 to make sure an attack hits and you're going to kill anyway. So you click Focus Strike. Okay, fair enough. Like it might have some use cases. Those use cases are very, very few and far between. Unfortunately, it's kind of it's a cool concept. I like the idea of a combat art that doesn't give might. It just gives you things in other areas. But 30 hit is just not enough. Foul play. You can basically swap places with a targeted ally that's within five spaces, and it is locked to Trickster. You need to master Trickster to get it. It's really good in Cindered Shadows, so I will say this right now. This tier list is not considering Cindered Shadows. Foul play is good. It's locked to a five move class, which really hurts it. You have to master the five move class, and the five move class is not very good. This is so hard to judge. It, like, in and of itself, in a vacuum, this is really good. Everything around it makes it kind of bad. I think it's in C tier, I don't know where. I might just throw it top of C tier and just move on with my life. There's a time, you, if you're in Trickster and you get foul play, you will get really good use out of it. But having to be in Trickster is kind of bad, and having to master Trickster doesn't exactly help. If you could take this out of Trickster, it would probably fight its way up quite reasonably. I think actually clicking this, like once you have this, clicking it, you'll be doing it a lot more than everything else in this tier. It, actually getting it is a lot more out of the way. If it was just takeable, it'd be like, hey, exactly, right? It'd be really good. But if you could do this on Dark Flyer or Wyvern Lord or something, it's gonna be it's gonna be really good. Frozen Lance. Frozen Lance is next up. I think this might be a bit of a, a controversial one from me here. Uh, so Frozen Lance provides three might, five hits, one range, and four durability. It costs four durability, I should say. It works as magical damage and it adds dex of 30% of your unit's dex to might. It can't make follow-up attacks. It is a budding talent from Marianne and Hubert. It comes at C plus for Lawrence and A for Flane and Ingrid. I genuinely think this is S tier. I think this is nuts. I think this is really, really good. You get it so early on Marianne and Hubert. It's incredibly high damage just from the get-go. You can absolutely stack damage on it. It's in a really good weapon type. You get Horse Slayers for insane damage output onto mounted enemies. You get the Blast Lance for insane damage output onto monsters. Lauren's one shots with it on chapter five, like really, not like super consistently, but you have to set him up, but he can very like easily. Leveling Marianne with Lancers before you get it is a massive pain though. Not really, like you have three tutoring blocks in chapter three. You can just use all of those on Lancers. Like you can still get Physic on Marianne for chapter two and then get Frozen Lance for chapter three. It's not a problem at all. I, I think it's kind of nuts. Like by level up, I assume we mean tutor. Right, like you have to tutor Marianne and Lancers, but it's really good. It works with obviously on Marianne and Ingrid and Flane, I guess. You can take it into Falconite, which is really nice. Paladin is good. Hi A, but Frozen Lance is not there with the best of the best. It's not that fast to kill. It kills from like chapter four. Like really or at least chapter five. Like, it's pretty fast to kill. Um, I think it's low S for sure. I don't think it's gonna be high in this tier, but I, I think it's definitely S tier. For me personally, I think Lancers on Mariana are exactly what you want to invest into. Like, I said this a couple of times on the um, the other, like, the playthrough we're doing, but... Uh, Lauren's can kill from Chapter 5, Rengor. I can actually send you the calcs in a second, because I typed them up in a comment not too long ago. Lauren's can kill from Chapter 5, though. Marianne definitely can. What makes it so much better than Bombard? Bombard is only on Caspar for a start. Uh, Frozen Lance can be taken into much better classes. Falconite, Paladin. Uh, it comes a lot earlier on some units as well. Not a lot earlier, but slightly earlier on some units. Coming at Chapter 3 is nuts for what it is at the point in time. Hitting on resistance is a lot better than hitting on defense. Most enemies have notably higher defense than resistance. It's also fully class flexible. Bombard can't be used in a lot of the magic classes, which is rarely relevant, but might be at some point. I don't know. I think Frozen Lance is absolutely nuts for the damage it does, and I am pretty confident it is an S tier. I think it's really insane. You don't need Rally Magic to kill with this at all. It's just as average as by that point in time, Ringle. Ringle, not all of us are playing 0% growth. That's just you. Um... <laughs> Our units gain stats when they level up. Yeah, so by level 10, he will have gained... Am I losing my mind here? He will have level 10 for chapter 5. And then he gains one from Mage. He'll not hit 10? Why not? For chapter 5? Are you kidding? You can hit 10 for chapter 5. I've definitely had units hit level 10 for chapter 5. Without having to abuse DLC orcs or anything. I mean, I did it in the last playthrough we did. I had units hit level 10 for chapter 5. Yeah, you can hit level 10 with units, but very few. But the, those, you, like, when you say very few, you mean very few per run, not very few units overall. Lawrence is terrible early. He has, like, 10 base might with his personal ability and Tempest Lance. He's fine. And he has Frozen Lance. Like, it's, he's not good, but, like, he's, he's okay early. He can get kills. 
Yeah, I don't think any unit accelerates particularly quick unless you deliberately give them kills. Like, in the early game of Three Houses Maddening, you're selecting a few units and you're feeding them kills to, to streamline them ahead. That's essentially how you play early game Three Houses Maddening. If you choose Lawrence for that, he can get to one-shot range. Magic plus two is bold to assume, possibly, but it's also in a mage. You don't start in Monk, but you'll have Monk by chapter three. And then you also have like, when obviously when you're in a healing class, you can heal, which is nice. It gives bonus class mastery without having to kill things. I could see tip Curve Shot being moved up, to be fair. I think Curve Shot is like notably above Enclosure and, um, and Drawback. Yeah, exactly. This is Lawrence the weakest. Like Cuba and Marianne can do it without much problems at all. And like I said about Lawrence, like, it's not easy to get him to kill, but you can get him to kill by that point if you if you do it. Reserve S for the absolute best. I mean, I think Frozen Lance is probably above that. I think these are just in a weird place right now. Like, throughout the entire game, from, like, from like chapter 4 through to, like, chapter... the end of the game, Frozen Lance is a great, great kill tool. Why can't I speak? Great, great kill tool. Jesus Christ. Ingrid and Flane also have Frozen Lance, but that's literally whatever. But yeah, personally, I definitely think Frozen Lance is up here. I think it's really good on Hubert and um, Marianne. Pretty okay on Lauren's. Maybe you click it on Ingrid. But yeah, I absolutely think Frozen Lance is amongst the best combat arts. Again, like, the, the weapons you can use it with as well are just really good. Getting Horse Slayers with it is always very nice. Um, I think it's definitely going to be, like, low S, but I think it's in that. I think it's in that bracket for sure. Glowing Ember gives two might. Ten Avoid or Crit Avoid. It costs for durability. It is one range. It adds defense times 0.3 to might. And it can't make follow-up attacks. It is A Lances for Dimitri or Gilbert and an 8 to Yuritsa. This is pretty mediocre. I don't think there's massive reasons to click it on Dimitri or Yuritsa. I think they just have better options. Gilbert could probably get some use out of it, to be fair. I think this is pretty meh. Probably like low C tier. Probably around Armored Strike, honestly. I think that's probably like about fair. It might be slightly better than Exhaustive, but I don't think it's a a huge difference maker. It's fairly okay. If you click it, it'll probably do a decent amount of damage. Uh, you're looking at 60, 70 more like. I mean, even then, 70 accuracy is like, what, like 80 true hit? Like, for a one shot on chapter five? Like, I would understand if we were talking about like chapter like 12 or something where you have a ton of other one shot options, but what else are you clicking? Like, what are your other one shot options at that point in time? Like, Cyril point blank volley? Yeah, you have vengeance, which needs setup. And also at that point in time, it's not like you have like God adjutants and stuff readily available. Bombard, I don't think is killing because it's hitting on um, it's hitting on defense and not resistance. So mathing vengeance is e mathing vengeance is easy, but you still have to you like, you can't use it turn one, for example, and you have to actually set up. Like I think like 80 hit on or 70, eight, well like 80 true hit on chapter five for a one shot is perfectly fine. If you're telling me you could have like swift strikes that's got 80 hit on chapter five, or like you're telling me you're not clicking it, like. Because I, I am, personally. Like, I'm taking that opportunity for a one-shot because there aren't any others really available. I'm going to uh, to hit the pause button on the uh, the Frozen Lance conversation there. We can revisit it at the end if we need to, but we do need to move on with with other things in the in the list. Hi, this is Editing Jono. So I've just watched back the whole Frozen Lance discussion, and I thought it would be good to go over some of the claims made in there because some of them were quite accurate and some of them were just a bit off-base. So I've made this graphic, which is on screen now, which shows... The three main Frozen Lance users, Marianne, Hubert, and Lawrence, when compared to the Chapter 5 enemies, or specifically the Fighter, Archers, and Thieves. And you can see the damages and hit rates that all of those units get there. So I'm not going to talk through it, but you're free to pause if you want to and just take a look at that. So the first claim I'd like to touch on is that Lawrence or any of these units probably struggled to hit Magic Plus 2 by that point in time, which is absolutely a fair claim to make. It's probably possible, or it definitely is possible, but it's probably not likely. Uh, you'd probably need more investment or more Orcs battles or something like that than would be considered standard. That being said, level 10 is absolutely possible for any unit at that point in time. Uh, you'll normally have somewhere between like 2 and 5 units at level 10 by chapter, by chapter 5. So you should be pretty reasonably able to get any of these units to that point, especially considering that all of them get Frozen Lance. So they do have kill power, they can pick up kills. And as well, also have magic spell lists, so you can get extra XP from that way through healing. That being said, the main point with Lawrence was that you could actually get him to kill. It does require quite a lot, but you can get him to a kill threshold. With Marianne, she pretty easily reaches the lower kill thresholds, but may need a little bit of a boost to push her to some of the tankier units. And for Hubert, he pretty much just steamrolls everything with no real issues on an average playthrough. So you do have options to kill with all three of these, and because of the massive plethora of options available to you at that point in time, you can easily amp them up if you want to. The other options are shown in the light blue text 
underneath all of the units. The other claim I want to address is the claim that you would have about 60 to 70 hit with a Steel Lance Plus when using Frozen Lance at this point in time. That's just a little off base, it's just a little below what the actual facts of it are. Um, your hit rate is more likely to be between the mid 70s and the high 80s depending on which unit you're using and what your target is, whether it's a thief, an archer or a fighter. And even with that, you still have options to amp them up beyond this, including things like linked attacks, which are very easy to trigger. But even without those things, yeah, you're probably looking at between the mid 70s to high 80s in hit. So you definitely are getting some pretty likely chances to hit and therefore kill because you can quite easily reach the kill thresholds. With all that said and done, we can crack back on with the rest of the tier list. I just want to quickly say that don't throw any shade to anyone involved in that conversation. It was just a discussion about a Fire Emblem combat art. Grounder is Might plus 3, Hit plus 20, Crit plus 5. It costs 4 durability, it deals bonus damage to flying units, and comes at sea swords to everybody. This is pretty solid, honestly. 20 hit is really nice, uh, 5 crit is good, bonus damage to flying units, okay, whatever, every bow can do that. But 20 hit is always going to be somewhat appreciated you can normally just slot it in on a unit if they hit it it's globally available swords being an accurate weapon type means that like you can actually like if you just need to finish a kill you can just click grounder would be useful if hit plus 20 isn't ubiquitous true there is a little gap between like when you can get sea swords and when you can like you're probably getting sea swords around like chapter what like three four if you pushed into them hard um you can get hit plus 20 around what like chapter seven maybe you're mastering archer so i think there is a gap there where grounder could serve a purpose but it is it's a bit iffy, for sure. I don't think it's, like, massively useful. Effective against flyers, but flyers are lance users. There's no weapon triangle in three houses, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, I think it's, like, probably, like, somewhere in C tier. Probably, like, high C tier, maybe. I think, like, the Wrath Strike issue is very prevalent. Like, Wrath Strike already gives 10 hits, and swords already are very accurate. And you don't have to get C swords, because, like, realistically, how high are you getting C swords? Like, or how many units are you getting C swords on? Enemies have break skills. Oh, yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, yeah, because it's advanced class sword breakers. Sorry, I forgot for a second there. But there are also wyverns that don't have breaker skills. There are flying monsters which don't have breaker skills. Like, there are flying enemies that don't have breaker skills. It's probably not above foul play. I can't think of a single scenario where you wouldn't just rather use a bow. True, but like, if you were using a sword and you click this, it's not the worst, right? Like, 20 extra accuracy is fine. I don't think it's the worst. It could honestly be somewhere lower in here. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Diamond X probably actually has more click cases than this. It works on monsters. Eh, 20 extra hit on monsters is quite nice. We'll just leave it there. I think it's a pretty accurate placement. If it shuffles around, I don't think it'll be much more than that. Haze Slice, plus 2 Might, plus 30 Avoid, cost 5 Durability. It is an 8 to Yuritsa and is C plus Swords on Edelgard, Ignatz, and Seteth. Uh... No? I don't think I've ever clicked this in my life. I'm going to be completely honest. I mean, a plus avoid combat art is very sketchy in the first place. I guess if you went sword, if you went like a swordmaster dodge tank on Ignatz, it could do something because it gives you alert stance basically while still having an enemy fate. No, it doesn't because the plus 30 avoid doesn't carry over. What am I saying? No, this is just bad. I was trying to find some niche use case for it. I think this is kind of just bad. Healing focus. It is a B tier combat art. Or B brawling combat art. Not B tier combat art. That's not what I meant. It restores 50% of the user's HP and it is globally available. I don't know why it's got a brawling icon. Ignore that. It should be a little little star. Healing focus is good in quick repost grapplers and, f and protection stacking. Maybe? Uh, I could see it. Um, it definitely has its uses. Like, it's not bad. It's globally available. B brawling is a bit of a steep ask. And I don't think healing is hard enough to come by in the games where you're clicking it frequently. But I think it's definitely like, it's okay. It's... I just, like, even if you're playing quote-unquote like a normal FE, I, I think there's so many healing options in Three Houses that you don't necessarily need a combat art for one, but, like, personally, there's no way I'm running this over on movement combat art, for example. There will be times where you could click it, for sure, but it's few and far between, right? Most times I'd rather my units are hitting things rather than healing themselves up when you usually would have a unit dedicated to healing your other units. Heavy Draw gives 8 might, 10 hit, it's 2 range, cost 5 durability, it deals bonus damage to flyers, it cannot make follow-up attacks, it is innate to Shamir and C plus bows on Felix and Hubert. I think this is actually pretty good. I think it's kinda nice on um I think it's kinda nice on Shamir before you get Hunter's Volley. 
I think it's pretty good on Felix. A plus 8 damage amplifier while you're going towards Sniper is really good. I think this is like low B tier, like for now. It's probably actually above Bane of Monsters. Maybe Break Shot. I can go either way on that. I think Heavy Draw is like better at its time than Break Shot, but Break Shot like probably carries more. It might even be above Fading Blow, honestly. Helm Splitter comes at C Axes. It gives plus 7 might, plus 5 hit. It's 1 range. It costs 5 durability. It deals bonus damage to armored units. It hits really hard. That's basically it. It hits really hard at C Axes. It's pretty good. It's arguably here. I'm pretty sure it has plus 5 hit, not plus 5 crit. At least according to the wiki I'm using. <laughs> plus 7 might plus 5 crit on the fandom wiki. Okay, it seems like the um, the other wiki might just be wrong if Serenz and the fandom are, um, are disagreeing with it. Um, either way, I don't think it's making a massive difference. I'm pretty sure it's plus 5 crit if that's what everything is saying. It doesn't make a massive difference. But I think it's probably just above Deadeye. It gives a big pile of hit at the C rank. It's pretty good. It gives a big pile of damage at the C rank. That's what I meant. So we're going to put it top of B tier for now. Bonus damage to armor genius is kind of nice. I mean, you kind of just use a mace, but never mind. Hexblade gives plus 7 might, 10 hit, cost 3 durability, works as magical damage, and is innate to Manuela, C plus swords for Dorothea, and A swords for Anna, Constance, Edelgard, and Ingrid. I actually think this is really solid. Um, it's especially notable on Dorothea, who kind of can struggle for damage a little bit. It gives her a really, really nice damage spike. Similarly for Manuela, I imagine, but I haven't played around with it too much, but I imagine it would make sense. I mean, she's in a similar situation. And coming with it innately is definitely very appreciated. I think Hexblade is really solid. A rank for Constance is a little bit sketchy because you already have Soul Blade by that point, and by then it might be a little bit outclassed, but Constance doesn't have the best res growth. I think you can definitely still get some chapters out of Hexblade before Soul Blade overtakes it. I'm going to go low A tier. It's just a really nice magic combat art on swords. Manuela magic is so rich that she joins with the same strength. Hitting on res is better than hitting on armor then. Though, not then. But yeah, hitting on hitting on res is better than hitting on armor. So even with Manuela, you'd still, uh, still appreciate this. But yeah, I think this is pretty solid all around on the units that get it. Especially Dorothea, who really appreciates this for a really nice early game damage spike. We'll touch on this more when we get to Soul Blade as well. But like, swords in general are just nice for magic units to have. They're nice and accurate. They're pretty uncontested. You can normally just give whoever wants it, like the Rapier or the Sword of Zoltan if you're Blue Lions, or the Devil Sword or whatever, because they're just not a highly contested weapon type. So yeah, if a unit wants to use this, they probably can, and it's a really nice damage spike to hit on res. A hit and run gives 4 might, 10 hit, 20 avoid. It costs 4 durability. The user moves back one space after combat. You get it at C Lances on Ingrid, C Plus and Fla on Flame and Shamir. The problem is that, like, the units who would potentially run this, even if you used it on Shamir in, like, a Battalion Desperation build, have Kanto. Wait, is C Plus on Ingrid too? Okay, the wiki's just lying to me. I, I just don't think this is great, because the units that use it will probably have Kanto, and I don't think Flayne or Shamir ever really want to click this. Probably put it, like, reasonably C tier. I mean... Plus 4 damage, plus 10 hit is pretty solid at the end of the day. Like, it's not the end of the world, but it's just worse than Tempest Lance. It's better than Fading Blow? I don't think so. The units that use this have Kanto, so already have repositioning options. Fading Blow allows units that don't have movement options an option to reposition after after attacking, which I think is much more valuable. Like, maybe innately it's better than Fading Blow, but I think the units that get Fading Blow appreciate Fading Blow a lot more. For the purpose of saving time, Hunter's Volley is really, really good. It attacks twice in a row. You get it from Mastering Sniper. It's incredibly good. It's going here. It lets literally every unit in the game be a kill threat. Yeah, Hunter's Volley is busted. Let's just move on. Uh, you get it from Mastering Sniper. It also gives some crits and some... It's got two to three range. I I'm not looking it up, but... If you're watching the VOD, it'll be on the thing. Night Needler is pretty solid. The biggest problem Night Needler has is that past Chapter 8, it's completely useless because Horse Slayers are readily available. And, like, I'm pretty sure I might be misremembering. No, I'm definitely right. Uh, pressing Tempest Lance with a, Night Needler, with a Horse Slayer does more damage than pressing Night Needler with a Silver Lance Plus. So, it has its uses for sure. It could definitely be higher if Horse Slayers weren't so readily available. Like, being effective against horses is still really good, it just has that awkward caveat. I'll probably put it above. Fading Blow does feel a little high right now. Paralogs in Chapter 7? Oh, that's true, that is true. Land of the Golden Deer and such have mounted enemies, right? I could see it just above Heavy Draw. Five extra hit compared to Tempest Lance as well, it's always nice. It's also globally available, um, everyone gets this, so, you know, that's always nice as well. You might even get some use out of it in Chapter 8, because Chapter 8 has a lot of mounted enemies, and I think you only get three Horse Slayers at that point. 
a three per chapter. There might be one on the map as well, actually, now that I think about it. So, Lance Jab gives three Might, ten crit, it's one range, it costs five durability, it adds 30% of speed to the Might, and it's A rank Lances on Cyril, Leone, and Shamir. So, Lance Jab has a couple of really annoying points about it that kind of just make it bad. The biggest issue it kind of has is that the three units who get it all get Battalion Desperation. If you need to make use of this, you need to be fast enough for Lance Jab to do decent damage, but not fast enough to double and just use Battalion Desperation, which you get a lot earlier. Which is just really awkward. I'm not saying it's impossible. Things like Swordmasters and Assassins and Falconites, you can absolutely see that. But, like, just fundamentally, there won't be that many use cases from this. Cyril gets Point Blank Volley. Cyril gets Vengeance. The only gets Point Blank Volley... Shamir shouldn't be clicking this. Um, Shamir also just, like, isn't that quick. And by the time you're fast enough to use this, you will definitely have those just better combat arts. Uh, if you speed padded Shamir... The thing is, like, that's the thing. If you went Falcon Shamir and, like, padded her speed, you might get some use out of this. But then a lot of enemies you'll just be doubling. So even then, its use cases are really slim. I don't think it's really good... Um, I could see it potentially being clickable at some point over some of this. Let's put it above Finesse Blade and move on with our lives. So, Lightning Axe gives 4 Might, it's 1 range, it costs 3 durability, it works as magic damage, and it has resistance, 30% of your resistance to your Might. It is available at C plus axes on Annette and A axes on Edelgard and Sylvain. This is irrelevant on Edelgard Sylvain, that doesn't matter. It's really good on Annette. Like, genuinely, it's very, very good on a Wyvern Lord or Wyvern Rider Annette. She can do a lot of damage with it. Axes are a really powerful weapon type. Plus four might is really nice. The resistance modifier also helps. And hitting on resistance is always a huge benefit. Even warrior Annette's really good while you don't get dark. Yeah, I could even see that. The problem is it's only on Annette. <laughs> Edelgard and Sylvain do not matter in this conversation. I think it could be A tier. We do get a flying magic battalion. We do get the Nouveau Flyer Call. We get the DLC, but we just don't get, like, we're not counting Cindered Shadows or the Pagan Altar because I don't use it. I don't think it's better than Hexblade, but I think it could be A tier for sure. It's really good on the net. It's probably a net's most viable build from a combat perspective. Yeah, it's got it's got its use cases for sure. I think A tier here is fine. Mighty Blow is plus 10 might, minus 5 hit, plus 20 crit. It costs 3 durability. It's 1 range. It cannot make follow-up attacks. And it is A brawling on Alois, Balthus, Kaspar, and Dudu. We've got that A, B, C, D going on the users. This is bad. This is just bad. This is Diamond Axe, but it doesn't have the early use cases like um, like Diamond Axe does on like Claude and the, the C plus unit, Balthus. I genuinely don't know. I don't even think plus 10 might at A brawling is more than just doubling. This might be worse than Astra. I would rather click Astra than this. It's really bad. Yeah, I don't think there's really any reason to use that at all. Monster Breaker gives plus 9 might, costs 5 durability, and deals bonus damage to monster users. It's C plus axes on Cyril, Dudu, and Edelgard. The units that want it go axes anyway, and plus 9 might is a good thing. I don't know why I'm doing Monster Breaker before Monster Blast, but we'll just do it before. The units that want it get it. It's a huge might boost. Uh, it's around where Heavy Draw is. It's not as available as Helm Splitter, so despite it being, like, comparable, I don't think it's quite as good. Um, we'll put it above Deadeye and move on. I think Helm Splitter just being more readily available is is just worth the extra placement above it. It's, it's close for sure. Monster Blast. Plus 5 hit, plus 10 crit, 2 range, 4 durability, bonus damage to flying and monster units. C plus blows on Claude. What did I just say? C plus bows on Claude, A bows on Shamir. It's good. Yes. Plus 5 Might is nice. Bonus damage to flying and monster enemies, nice. Uh, above Deadeye, next to Monster Breaker. Probably above Monster Breaker, honestly. C plus Bows on Claude is really nice. Uh, very quickly attainable. It's not as good on Shamir, but it's also got that dual effectiveness, which is always appreciated. Monster Blast on Shamir is key to the Red Canyon Paralogue if you actually play it. Oh, that's true. It's A-Bows on Shamir, but Shamir joins with A-Bows, right? So it's an, it's an 8 on Shamir. Duh. Um, I'm an idiot. Yeah, it's really good. I was thinking, like, I'm sure I got this really early. Like, what am I missing here? My brain is, uh, disengaged at the minute. Breaking barriers in one turn is always useful as well. That's, uh, a nice little caveat that I forgot to mention there. A monster crusher gives plus 13 might and plus 10 hit. This gives more might than mighty blow. I know it's only on one unit, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> it gives 13 might, 10 hit, 10 crit, 4 durability, bonus damage on monsters, can't make follow-up attacks, and it's C plus brawling on Raphael. It's unique to Raphael, but it's pretty good. I mean, plus 13 might with plus 10 hit. There's situations where I could see that being useful, and bonus damage on monsters is always nice. It's probably not as good as the other ones, because it's 
just not as available. I mean, I know Monster Blast isn't hugely available, but Shamir is a very available unit, as she gets it innately. We'll stick it above Night Nightmare. It's a difficult one to judge because it's literally on one unit, but putting it around Bombard sounds okay. Monster Piercer grants plus 7 Might, plus 10 Crit. It's one range, four durability, bonus damage to monster units, cannot make follow-up attacks, and his steep off lances on Dimitri, Leone, Sataf, and Sylvain. Um, it's another good monster combat art. We'll just put it next to the other two, and I think it's maybe slightly worse. I don't know why. Um, no, his, his damage amplifier is only plus seven um, compared to Tempest Lance. It doesn't give a hit bonus, which kind of is annoying. Bonus damage on monster units, again, really nice. Being able to break barriers is nice. Dimitri, you will get this for free. Leone and Sylvain should absolutely reach this by this point in time too, so it's completely fine. Mystic Blow is A, Brawling on Byleth and Felix. Budding Talent on Constance. It's plus 10 Might. It works as magical damage. It can't make follow-up attacks. This is, like, actively terrible. Gaulers don't have the Might to make use of this. You're probably better off just clicking spells. Constance is the only one who would even consider it. She gets much better sword combat arts. No. You go away, Mystic Blow. Nimble Combo, on the other hand. Nimble Combo gives 4 Might. It gives 20 Avoid and Crit Avoid. It's 1 range, cost 3 durability, and most importantly, it has that Brave effect. It strikes twice consecutively. Catherine and Yuritsa join with it, and Felix gets it at C plus Brawling. I think Nimble Combo is really good. I think it's just a better version of Bombard just due to its like availability. Maybe top of B tier, honestly. I really like this on Felix, but then again, like it is Felix. I'm going to like this. It does give more damage, but it doesn't give any any additional things. But it does, it gives a void, but that's a lot less relevant. I think this is really good. Although maybe it being that high above Bombard is I think it's just a better Bombard. I think it's I think Felix being a better unit than Caspar probably helps it. Uh, we'll put it above Deadeye. We'll put a Deadeye in between them. One two punch gives eight might, twenty hit. It's one range, it has four durability. And it treats the unit as having attack speed more than the target's attack speed plus four. It grants them a follow-up attack and denies the target theirs if they had any normally. So it effectively always strikes twice in succession. The opponent doesn't counter-attack and it's a massive might modifier. It's C plus brawling on Alois and Dudu. You can run Desperation in Alois and it gives you player phase option Warmaster. Yeah, I mean, it's a really good combat art. The only issue is its availability is a little bit scuffed on Alois and Dudu, but it's still on two good units who can make good use of it. It's a massive might modifier of like 16. Yeah, it's 20 hits as well, which is really good. This is really solid, honestly. Not getting it until... Well, I guess Dudu gets it kind of early, actually. Dudu does have Vengeance, but like, would there still be benefit to using this? 20 hits is really nice. I think this is like pretty reasonable. Um, even if it is just Alois, it's still really good. You can also, yeah, you can one put, you can one-two punch on T1. Uh, yeah, you can one-two punch on turn one, get chunked down on the enemy phase, and then Vengeance from there on out. Like, it gives a turn one option, like, turn one player phase option to Dudu, which is still very useful. I'm going to put it above Helm Splitter. I think it's, like, its outright performance is just better. Paraseline, Paraseline, I don't know how you say it. It gives 10 Might, it gives 10 Avoid, it's one range, and your unit moves one space backwards after combat. You get it from Mastering Great Lord. It's just too out of the way. Just way too out of the way. I'm going to throw it out there right now. I'm going to stop ordering D tier. Mastering Great Lord is a massive investment, and what you get from it is also not great. And then you have to stay in Great Lord to keep using it. Yeah, this is just all bad all the time. Numa Gale. It gives 7 Might. It gives 10 Hit. It's 1-2 range. It's the only 1-2 range gauntlet combat art. Works as magical damage. It's War Monk and War Cleric only. And it's gotten from mastering those classes. I think this is really weird. Honestly, not the worst. Like, plus seven might on gauntlets just is worse than just clicking a spell. Like, I'm trying to think who would want to go this and not just click a spell that does more than, like, ten damage. I think this is probably honestly pretty bad. Eh, maybe not. It's better than Mystic. It's not D tier, that's for sure. I'm just going to throw it at, like, low C tier. We'll put it above Exhaustive Strike, I guess, and just move on. I don't think it's great, but you can probably get some cases out of it, I guess, but... Clicking spells is probably just strictly better most of the time. Uh, I guess spells have limited uses. You might get really far into a map. I have no idea. You get Fist Fair, I guess, in, in War Monk, right? So, like, it takes it up to... You get use of that. And it actually could be more powerful than spells in that case. With, like, Silver Gauntlets or something, you click that. Yeah, okay, it could be more powerful than spells. It's still extremely niche. Point Blank Volley gives 3 Might, 10 Hit, 10 Avoid, 1 Range, costs 4 Durability, and it strikes twice consecutively. It is a Brave Combat Art. It deals bonus damage to flying units, it cannot make follow-up attacks, and its range is not affected by the bow range abilities. It comes at C plus on Cyril and A on Leone. This is an easy S tier. 
Absolutely. I think it's not being class locked probably puts it here. You think this is high, eh? I think this is an easy S. It lets Cyril literally one round all of chapter five. It's so good. It gives Leone really, really consistent good kill power for everything she can't kill with bat desk. I think this is incredibly good. It gives Leone the flexibility to decide between Sniper and Bonite. Never mind Sniper, Bonite, Wyvern Lord. Hunter's Volley is better due to range. You also get point blank volley earlier. It's less accessible than Hunter's Volley, that is true. But it gives more damage than, than Hunter's Volley as well. You can also use point blank volley in Kanto. You can use point blank volley in Flying in an 8 move class. But it is a lot less available, right? Like, a lot more units are made better by Hunter's Volley or Fierce Iron Fist, but I think, like, actually using Point Line Volley is better. Um, especially, like, Chapter 5 on- like, Chapter 5 onwards on Cyril, like, it's insane. The fact that you get it so early is ridiculous. It is only on two units, but it's really good on those two units. It is very, very good on those two units. And not being class locked is really nice. Like, being able to take it out of out of Sniper. Cyril gets Vengeance. He gets Vengeance later. He gets Vengeance later, and also Point Blank Volley doesn't require setup. Again, like, it's, it's still really good. Like, even after Cyril gets Vengeance, Point Blank Volley is still very relevant. The meter are good. Well, I'm happy to have a good unit rather than a useless unit. I mean, true, but, like... It's getting point blank volley on chapter five is absurd. Personally, I would say this is this is here. You need to steal plus bow, sure, but like, yeah, I, I think it's still holds a lot of relevance here. Reposition basically takes a unit, flings them from behind you to in front of you. It takes a unit from one side of you and drops them on the other side. It comes from Mastering Soldier. The big issue here is that reposition is slightly, I think, personally, I think it's better. However, less units are Mastering Soldier and the units that are Mastering Soldier are less likely to keep running this. They have more things they want to run, whereas Drawback is ran by Mages, which is pretty much exclusively always going to be running Drawback. In terms of using them, I prefer reposition to Drawback. In terms of how much use I get out of them, Drawback trumps resist, uh, reposition. Or is that in resistance? Reposition is trumped by Drawback like every time. That being said, repo is still great. Uh, I think it's really undervalued because not that many people are going Soldier. But when you do, it's really, really good. You don't just get reposition and you're thankful for it, sort of like you are with shove. Reposition is actively great. Reposition is good on flyers that don't have a good player phase option. True, there is a reasonable number of those. But I'm still not sure like how many of those actively want to go soldier. Like You're probably having to go back for it, which again is more out of the way than drawback. Reposition is, is really, really good. I just think drawback holds more consistency on the units that get it. They're more likely to run it. And also the movement on the mage, like the fact it moves the mage itself is really good for drawback. Because mages can lack movement a lot of the time, especially in classes like Grammary, Bishop, etc. So having access to this is really nice. Rushing Blow gives 7 might, 20 hits, 10 avoid and crit avoid. It's 1 range, 3 durabilities, and the unit moves 2 spaces forward after combat. So essentially it moves through the enemy. Rushing Blow has its moments. It's really good for like charging forward on Balthus. Like in the early game, it's pretty solid. The problem is that its damage is kind of underwhelming. 20 hit is nice. I think it has use cases for sure. Above Foul Play and under Fading Blow. I actually, yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I would say it's low... B rather than high C. I, I think there's enough situations where you can click this to, I mean, moving forward two tiles is really nice. Like, if you're, even if you're just chipping a unit and then, like, you move through them and you can keep moving afterwards, it's really nice for that. Like, movement abilities are always going to be somewhat valuable. Uh, movement abilities on brawlers that are available early, yeah, okay, like, it's hard to complain. It's definitely got its, its place in the game and I, you can click it enough, I think, to where it's B tier. Also, 20 hit with 7 might is also really nice. Sism Shot gives 4 might, 15 hit. It's got 2 to 3 range. It costs 3 durability. It deals bonus damage to flying units. And if the unit hits the target, it infl inflicts a minus 5 resistance debuff on the target after combat. It's C plus bows on Hanneman and A bows on Hubert. A bows on Hubert is incredibly out of the way. Um, C plus bows on Hanneman is okay, I guess. This is a significantly worse break shot. The effect alone is worse than break. The effect alone is basically negligible. I don't really think that's worth factoring in. Maybe to a very small degree. And its pool of units is really awkward. C plus bows is Hanneman at base. Okay, that is worth worth noting. But do you use Hanneman? I mean, if you do use Hanneman, it's okay on him, right? The problem is that, like, why are you using bows on Hanneman instead of just spells? Um, you can use Magic Bow, obviously, later in the game, but when you're later in the game, you probably aren't clicking Schism Shot, you're clicking Hunter's Volley, which is better. Um, assuming you're in Sniper, of course, and if you're not, you're just killing things. And also, later in the game, debuffs matter a lot less. Uh, I, I could see maybe some scenario where it holds some usefulness. I'll throw it in the bottom of C tier, and if it turns out that's wrong, eh. 
When do you ever need three units, including a mage, to kill an enemy so that Sism brings it down to two units? That is a good point. Yeah, that I actually I see what you're getting at there, aggressively mediocre. Like, if you're hitting an enemy with a bow and your mage can't kill them, that mage should probably not be deployed on the map in the first place. That's actually a very valid point. Like, when is this minus five resistance debuff ever coming into handy? Probably never. And if you need to soften an enemy... Also, I'm pretty sure Hanuman's spells will just deal more than five more damage more than this will hit for. So you can just click a spell and get more out of it. Yeah, it's... This is... Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. We'll put it D here. It's a very good point you made there. I do agree with you. Shatter Slash gives four might, ten hit, it's one range, it costs three durability, and if it attacks and hits the target, it inflicts a five defense debuff on the target after combat. It comes innately to Gilbert and Yuritsa, it comes at C plus Lancers to Ferdinand and Hilda, and it is in, it's a budding talent to Ash. Yeah, I think Shatter Slash's saving grace is that Ferdinand and Hilda can combo at a seal speed for a huge debuff. It's... Like, it's got its place. The problem is that Shatter Slash as a standalone combat art is not great. Ash can use it for debuffs because he isn't killing. Meh. It is good for fighting monsters early on. I, I will grant it that. I could see it being like high C tier rather than maybe low B. It could be low B. I think I'd rather... I think I'd like it more in high C. I think it sits better there. Shove lets you push another unit one tile. You get it from Mastering Fighter. It comes super early and it's it's a movement ability i mean it's really good like shove's nice yeah shove is an incredibly b tier ability the thing is again a lot of your units might drop this later on but it's definitely worse than repo for sure i don't care if it like more units get this it's worse than repo i'll put it above the monster stuff i guess i really like it early on it's a good movement tool yeah it's it's shove at the end of the day it can't go much higher i think it'll sit fine there if people want it a bit lower that's fine smash it gives three might 20 hits 20 crits one range it costs five durability and it comes at d axes to everyone smash is really interesting it's really useful early on for the accuracy boost and then later on it becomes really good on war masters for the accuracy and the crit boost um it sort of goes through the mid game of like not really being relevant and then in the late game it comes back on war masters as being really good even outside of war masters it's still good but like the crit boost is probably a bit less likely to matter as much. I think Smash is really good um, just throughout the game. I don't think it's a tier behind Curve Shot. I, I do think it's worse than Curve Shot. I don't think it's a tier worse than Curve Shot. So I think I'm going to put it in A tier. Also, I've scrolled S tier off screen, haven't I? There we go. Yeah, you can uh, you can rig the, the crit if you want. I'm going to put it above Repo. I'm going to put it above Encloser. I think it's really good. <laughs> it's also like really, really readily available. Like everyone is getting this because everyone is going Brigand. So literally anyone who wants this has it without even trying. It's great. Smite. It comes from B Heavy Armor. It shoves a unit two tiles. It's shoved with an extra tile. But the problem is it's shoved with a lot more investment. That's its, its biggest problem. It's it's B heavy armor. It's not only is it like a reasonably high rank, it's a reasonably high rank in a skill you generally don't want to raise. Gilbert does have it at base and that is very useful. Um, and if you do get it, it, it is good. It's just how often are you going to get it is the thing. It does help with hunting by daybreak. Again, if you get it, it's, it's a really good ability. Also, the time when you get this, like compared to shove, like sh the movement ability of shove is a lot more useful when you get shove because like you don't have a dancer, for example, at that point in time. Whereas smite, you're probably getting a fair whack later. I think it's going to go C tier. It's kind of similar to foul play in a way. Like it's a movement combat art that's fine when you click it, but it's kind of niche. I'd probably just put it below foul play and just move on. Soul Blade gives you 2 might, 10 hit, and it's 1 range, it costs 4 durability, it works as magic damage, and it adds resistance times 0.3 to your might. It can't make follow-up attacks. It is C plus swords on Anna Constance and Marianne, and the budding talent on Lysithia. Uh, Soul Blade is really good on Constance. <laughs> um, it's probably pretty good on Marianne, but she has um, Frozen Lance, which is just better. It does eventually outscale Hexblade, but it does take a while. Lysithia can also get some decent uses out of this. The difference is Lysithia has a good spell list that actually does damage. I think it's definitely A tier. I think I'd like it slightly more than Soul Blade. The fact it comes before Hexblade on Constance, like even though it is performs worse, it's really nice because you get it before you get Hexblade. I think I'm just going to put it above Hexblade. Spike gives 5 might, 15 hits, 10 crit, one range. It's got costs five durability. It doesn't give one range. It is one range, I should clarify. It can't make follow-up attacks. It comes at C plus axes on Alois, Anna, Gilbert, Hilda, and Sylvain. This is just worse smash, in which case, and since smash comes earlier, I don't know really why you'd ever click it. It gives two more damage, I guess, but less hit and crit. I don't really think there's ever any reason to use this. 
It gives a bit more damage, but it's it's mostly bad. It's also a lot less of it, a lot less availability, yes. The fact it's just like flat out class means it can't really go higher than it's flat out class best thing everyone gets before it. Which kind of blows. It also has like no effects at all. Like it doesn't have like bonus damage or anything like that. So we'll just throw it in C tier. It can go above healing focus. What on earth is subdue? Why do I not know what this is? Who gets this? What is this? Oh, it's the Lord Class Mastery thing. That explains a lot. Um, it grants no might. It's hit plus 20. It grants nothing else. It costs 3 durability. And it leaves the target with 1 HP if the attack would kill a no. We're not discussing this any further. Basically, it can't kill enemies. It leaves them at 1 HP. Fire Emblem's False Swipe. We'll put it in D and we'll move on. This is all bad all the time. I don't want to hear anything about setting up kills for other units or anything like that. It's also, Mastering Lord. Are we joking? No, get out. This would be F tier if I could be bothered to make an F tier. Sunder grants plus four might, it grants 15 crit, it's one range, it costs three durability, it can't make follow-up attacks. Is this just plus four might on Dimitri, Ferdinand and Felix? And plus 15 crit. This is also bad. This is just bad. This is just really bad. It's just four might, it gives less might than Wrath Strike, and it doesn't give any hits, but it gives 15 crit. I don't care, go get in D tier, get out of here. Swap is the class mastery for Myrmidon, and you switch places with the targeted ally. Eh? I mean, it's a movement combat, all right, so it's okay. I'll put it next to Smite um, and Foul Play in the big pile of movement combat arts that no one actually uses. It's also net move zero. I'm just going to move this down just to indicate it's significantly worse. I don't even think it. Just get down there. It's net move zero, which is just not ideal. Like, it switches your two units around, sure, and there are situations where that could be useful, hence why it's in C tier, but... It's out of the way from Mastering Marmadon, which is not overly de desirable. It can only be used on a Yeah, you could use it on a unit with Kanto. It's pretty niche. It might have a use case, but it's it's pretty bad. Swift Strikes gives two might, one range. It costs four durability, and it strikes twice consecutively. It has that brave effect. It is A Lancers on Ferdinand, Sylvain, and Seteth. It's more available than Point Blank Volley, but it's also not got that early availability that Point Blank Volley has. It's an S tier combat art. I think it's probably there. So there's very little you can complain about Swift Strikes. It's a really good weapon type. You can use it with Horse Slayers, Blast Lancers. It, you've got a plethora, uh, a whole pile of Lancers that are just really good. Lance of Ruin, the Luin, uh, Ariad Bar if you want to. It's not class locked. That is another good point. It can be used on anyone. The users have a crest that works with combat art, so that's something of a point like, oh, that's a good point, actually. It's a very good point. Uh, Lancers do have a higher might than bows, so probably better than PBV. Late game, also true. These two are incredibly close. Point Blank Volley and Swift Strikes are really, really close. I think Point Blank Volley coming at so early for Cyril is going to give it the edge for me, but it's it's incredibly close. Lancers have the same might as bows across the board, yeah, but I think there's more higher might Lancers, right? Like, you get, like, the Lance of Ruin and things like that that blow things out. Then Horse Slayers and things like that that, like, blow the bows out of the out of the water just because of the, the unique. Although bows also have flying enemies, right? So I guess. Um, yeah, Swift Strikes for me is just going to be slightly behind Point Blank Volley because of Point Blank Volley's early availability. Once you get them both, they're incredibly similar and very, very good. Hunter's Volley forces you to have both air. I mean, it also forces you to be in Sniper, which is worse than being in other things. And also having both air. Yes, you have both air, but you have less might than Wyvern Lord. Uh, Sword Dancer is D tier because you don't want to be doing anything with your Dancer that isn't pressing Dance. If you have to click this, you're having a bad time. Tempest Lance is incredible. Tempest Lance is really, really good. Tempest Lance comes at D Lances for everyone. It grants 8 might, 10 hit. It costs 5 durability. Can't make follow-up attacks. I think Tempest Lance it goes right next to Curve Shot. It's the early game damage combat art. It is incredibly good at that point in time. 8 damage at that point is immense. It's really, really nice. Like, chapter 2 plus 8 damage is huge. It's available on a ton of units. The only issue it has is it falls off a lot harder than both Curve Shot and Smash do. It doesn't really have any late game relevance. There are just better damage options out there when this is all this really gives is damage. It gives 10 hits as well, but, like, by and large, it doesn't scale as well into the late game. But early game, it is the damage combat art. It is very, very good. And it's so widely accessible. It's going very high in A tier, next to Curve Shot. Triangle Attack. We don't need to look this one up. You get it from Mastering Pegasus Knight. It requires like three units to use. It does some nutty damage things. If you're watching the VOD, it'll be on screen. I can't be bothered to read its description. It's about eight miles long. It's bad. Um, Don't use it. Vengeance. It's going there. Vengeance is incredible. It's available incredibly early. It's C plus on 
Bernadetta and Dadu, meaning you can get it for Chapter 4, which is ridiculously early for its power. Vengeance grants plus 2 might, it grants 10 crit, it costs 4 durability, it's 1 range, and it adds the unit's missing HP to their might. It can't make follow-up attacks. It is available to Bernadetta, Dadu, and Cyril at C plus Lancers. It's incredible. It's the biggest, biggest damage spike in the game. It's literally the highest damage combat art in the game. It's got incredible might, kill power. I mean, I don't know what more I need to say about Vengeance. It kills everything it hits from chapter 4 till the end of the game. It requires setup. That's its only drawback. You can't use it on that turn 1 player phase. That's it. That is the only drawback it has. What class is Vengeance to do usually in? So here's the fun thing about Vengeance to do. If Vengeance to do with, I think it's on average, can kill endgame Warmasters in Paladin from level 20. Level 20 Paladin to do can kill endgame Warmasters. Chapter 22 Warmasters. It's nuts. Like, you can go Warmaster in Dual Phase if you want to with Killer Lancers. You can go Wyvern Rider, which is what I like to do, or Paladin. I'm a big fan of Paladin to do. It's insanely good. And even if you do want to argue, oh, that's on average, it's not guaranteed, it doesn't matter, it's at level 20. Dudu's not going to be as average level 20 by the time you get to the end game. It's incredibly good. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's on 1 HP, um, but you can easily get to 1 HP thanks to Guard Agitants. You can easily get to 1 HP thanks to the Blessing Battalion. You have so many options. You can also use Relics. Yes, Dudu does not have a crest. And it's not just on Dudu either, it's also on Bernadetta, who can use it in Pegasus Knight from level 10. Vengeance is elite. It's so, so, so good, and yeah, for me, it's it's at the top of S tier. I think it's the best combat art in the game. Spoiler alert that Warmaster's Strike or Wind God are not going above it. Waning Shot grants 4 might, 10 hit, it's 2 to 3 range, it costs 3 durability, it deals bonus damage to flying units, and if the user's attack hits the target, it inflicts a minus 5 strength debuff on the target after combat. It cannot make follow-up attacks, it is C plus bows on Petra, A bows on Ash, and Mercedes's budding talent in bow. This is incredibly C tier. Like, this is the definition of C tier. Mercedes gets it early when it's still actually quite useful. Yes, I'm excluding the Relic Arts. The Relic Arts are not on this list. Raging Storm is better. Yeah, it's it's good on Mercedes' budding talent, I guess, because what else are you doing with Mercedes? C plus bows on Petra is pretty attainable. You could probably get it when it's still relevant. It's, it's just a reasonable early game debuff combat art. It's fine. Better than Spike? Yeah, sounds good to me. It could go anywhere in here, honestly. CT has become a bit of a mess. It's okay. You you can't go too wrong with, with Waning Shot. You can definitely have moments where you can click it. And again, it coming on Mercedes means like you can use it in like Mage, because what other combat arts is she running, right? Like For when she's not healing, she can debuff enemies. Warmaster's Strike gives 3 might, 30 hit. One, it's 1 range. It costs 5 durability. It deals bonus damage to all units. And it cannot make follow-up attacks. It's Warmaster only, and you have to master Warmaster to get it. It comes so late in the game, but it is pretty okay. Like, 30 hit is nice, although it is at the point, like, again, 30 hit at the end game is not the same as 30 hit in the early game, or even 20 hit in the early game, because you have a lot more hit-boosting tools in the late game. So it's, it's not like great but i just think it comes too late to go into b tier i've got to be honest i think the used cases you'll get out of this are already fairly limited you probably have better options by this point in the game anyway and honestly i would normally rather just click smash which considering you get smash at base on some of these units is pretty bad we'll put it above diamond axe We'll put it next to Diamond Axe, slightly below because you don't get it early. Ward Arrow grants 4 Might. It's got 15 hit. It deals bonus damage to flying units. It affects, inflicts the silence status on the target. And it's at A bows for Hanuman and Ignatz. I mean, I guess it's okay. It comes really late for what it is. But yeah, this is generally pretty bad. There may be some niche use cases of it that I'm not thinking of. Silencing is okay, but mages are usually so squishy you can just kill them. Let's just... Yeah, I'm with Rui on this one. Let's just C-rank it and move on. Uh, I guess you might get A-bows before you get Hunter's Volley, but even then, like, you can probably kill a mage. Does anyone know if the silence takes place in the combat or if it waits until after the combat? Does it stop the mage from attacking, I guess is what I'm asking. Does it stop the mage from attacking? Okay, no, no this is this is just bad. Um, I'm moving it down to D tier. If it doesn't affect till after, it's just bad. Wild Abandon it gives 10 might, loses 30 hit. It gives 30 crit. It's one range, it can't make follow-up attacks, it costs 5 durability, C plus axes on Casper, Petra, and Raphael. 10 might and 30 crit is nice, C plus axes is not a bad time to get it, but you lose 30 hit. 
like, the fact it comes at C plus axis doesn't really matter because you can't actually really click it at that stage in the game. Um, it's probably next to Diamond Axe, I guess. Like, yeah, the Diamond Axe, but even more extreme. Can I just put it next to these other combat art, these other axe combat arts, and we'll move on with our lives? It could actually be really good late game. I will give you that, like, War Master Caspar, when you can pump up his hit high enough, again, with his personal skill, it could, I could actually see that being useful, right? It could replace Smash, essentially. You could use this instead of Smash in late game on Caspar. I will actually give you that. I will move it up. I will put it at the top of C tier because I do actually see a tangible use case for this thing. And yeah, late game on Caspar or even Raphael, maybe, I could see it in War Master. Maybe. I will give it the benefit of the doubt. Wind God, I will tell you right now, Wind God is not a bad ability, but it is not going above C tier because mastering Barbarossa is way too late. Wind God is high, eh? It is, it's too late in the game. I'm sorry. You, you cannot get, you can't put Wind God high, eh? You don't get Barbarossa until chapter 17, and then you need, what, is it 200 class XP to master it? It's too late in the game. Claude can get it due to a lot of enemy phase. True, Wrathvantage Claude could potentially get it. I'm not denying he could get it. Claude is your main enemy phase unit? I don't necessarily agree with that. I think you've got better enemy phase units than Claude, but we are considering not doing orcs and excessively grinding. Like, let's say even you master this by chapter 18, right? You get Wind God for, what, uh, four chapters? Maybe five, but I doubt you're only taking two combat arts into the chapter. You could still want this if you're Wrathvantage to dual phase, but like... 19 at least? Really? That would mean your Claude is seeing 25 combats per bat per map. Assuming no paralogs. Are there any paralogs left over at that point? I don't think there are. I might be wrong. Uh, Wind God doesn't cost a combat art slot. Oh, okay. That's, that's, oh, that's true. Right. It's a Barbarossa thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. True. That is a good point. Okay, then. It is active in the map that you get it. I still think it's too late. Let's say you get it at chapter 19. What? You get it for chapter 19, 20, 21, 22? I still think it's too late. Yeah, even if you give him a knowledge gem, you need 50 combats. So you would need 25 per chapter. Claude's Paralogue and you have a lot of wyverns to kill? Fair, fair, fair. I could see it being low B. Like, it's so late in the game. But, but when you get it, it is really good. Like, yeah, granted. Just because I didn't say it, Wind God gives 5 mites, 20 hits. It's 2 to 5 range. It costs 3 durability. Deals bonus damage to flying units. It's Barbarossa's only. Can't make follow-up attacks and you get it from Mastering Barbarossa. It's really, really late. It is good when you get it, I do agree, but I'm I'm just a little skeptical on how much you should actually get out of it. It's kind of like this game's ethos, in a way. Like, you get it really late, but it's good when you get it. Wind Sweep gives 3 might, 20 hits, 10 crit. It costs 5 durability. The target cannot counterattack, and it can't make follow-up attacks. It's C plus swords on Yuri, A swords on Byleth, Dimitri, and Yuritsa. Uh, Wind Sweep's great. It's a solid A tier combat art. Stopping counterattacks at C plus on Yuri is really nice. Um, you don't have much that's like one-shotting at that point in the game. Byleth gets it at A rank. It's a little later, but it still holds a lot of value. Stopping enemies counterattacking is really nice. And yeah, you can't go too wrong with, with Wind Sweep, really. It's just a really good combat art for the point in time where you get it. Yeah, I put it probably slightly above Lightning Axe just because of it's really good on Yuri when you at the time when you have it. It is really good against bosses. It's really good against monsters. It's hard to complain about, really. It's, it's really good. Wrath Strike gives 5 might, 10 hit. It costs 3 durability, it's 1 range, it can't make follow-up attacks, and every unit gets it at D swords. It is good for its time. It is below the other combat arts that are early game. The Curve Shot, Tempest Lance, Smash. It doesn't quite hold the same value, and even as early as Chapter 2 or Chapter 3, you, might, you will probably see this start to drop out. It definitely falls off harder than the others. Especially compared to Tempest Lance, because it is very comparable to Tempest Lance. It gives the same hit boost as Tempest Lance, it gives 3 less might, but it uses less durability, which at that point in time actually matters a little bit. You can run out of Lances on Chapter 2. I'm really torn on whether to put this low A or high B. Above Helm Splitter is not a bad strike. Bad strike? It's not a bad shout. We'll put it above Helm Splitter. Even worse than Fading Blood? I don't think I agree with that. I think you get a lot of use out of um, Wrath Strike on, like, the prologue in chapter one. Felix with Wrath Strike on chapter one is really good. Byleth with Wrath Strike on chapter one is really good. Um, and you still get use out of it for like chapter two, chapter three. Again, hit with swords is nice because swords are more accurate than lances anyway. So although the hit boost is the same, your Wrath Strike will be more accurate. So there is still merit to using it for a little bit past that, but it will fall out of favor pretty quickly. I just realized that we missed Assassinate. This is a sword combat art, which gives 15 hit, 15 avoid, has one range, costs five durability, and may instantly defeat the enemy. 
you get this from mastering the assassin class. This is probably low C tier, its effect is not a common occurrence, but with a boost of 15 hit and the potential for an insta kill, it's one of those that if you get, you will probably click it quite a bit, just in case you bag the kill for free. That wraps up the tier list. If you want to discuss it further, feel free to do so in the comments, just keep it civil. I would like to once again thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon, the support is greatly appreciated. If you want to discuss this video, the channel, or Fire Emblem in general, consider joining the Discord, a link to which is in the description. Thanks for watching.